Good evening and happy Mother's Day to everybody around the world. My name is Ryan and I am a pastoral student at HPC this fall. And I just wanted to give a shout out to all the hardworking women out there who are doing whatever they can to make sure that their children are taken care of. Yes, I'm talking about the moms and mothers in this world. And I wanted to give you an example of what a mother's love is. Three things that make up a mother's love. That's compassion, discipline, and support. So I'm going to also talk about three different uh, Bible verses as well that kind of go hand in hand with the mother's love and kind of tell you how my mom personally relates to each and every one of these. So the first one I'm going to read out of is Isaiah 49:15, And that has to do with compassion. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. <clears throat> Again, we're talking about compassion. The big difference between mothers and fathers, fathers are seen as the disciplinaries, and then mothers are seen as the nurturers. And mothers tend to be more compassionate. Let's say you hurt yourself. Who do you normally run to? Who do you normally cling to? Cling to your mother. When somebody calls you a name, who do you normally go to? Your mom. When you go through a breakup, who do you normally go to? Your mom. Whenever something bad happens, we always end up running back to our mom because we know that she loves us. And we know that she has our best interests in heart. And we know that she does not want to see us get hurt. I'll tell you a story about how compassionate my mom is. Now, my mom has her flaws. All humans have flaws. But my mom is one of the most compassionate women in the world. She is one of the most selfless people, too. And selfless means that you think more of other people than you do yourself. Now again, my mom is constantly thinking of other people all the time. I can tell you a few stories of what I mean by that. I think usually during Christmas time, my mom enjoys Christmas. She loves buying gifts for her family as well as people that she works with. And there was this one lady, I can't remember her name, but she kind of worked in the similar department that my mom worked in. And she knew that she didn't have enough money. So what my mom decided to do is my mom decided out of the goodness of her heart to buy this lady a tablet. Not because my mom wanted any recognition or because my mom wanted a pat on the back or anything like that. She knew that this woman didn't have much. And she knew that it would brighten her day if somebody did that for her. So to make this woman's day, my mom bought her a tablet so that she could communicate with her family, so that she could read books if she wanted to, so that she could do all these things. And I think that really goes to show you what kind of person my mom is. And that's exactly how she she taught us. Now, some people teach people certain lessons, but I, I honestly feel more as caught than taught. I mean, you could teach your children whatever you want, but if they don't see you doing it, they won't do it. Now, my mom didn't really teach us a whole lot. Not to say that we didn't learn anything from her, but we learned by her example. Another thing that my mom would typically do out of the selfishness, selflessness of her heart is she would make food for people. Now, during the holiday season, 
typically people are supposed to make something, bring it over. My mom, out of the goodness of her heart, ends up planning the entire meal. She'll make it. She'll do whatever. Because she's all about serving people. And that's what she does best. She serves people. Because she doesn't seek any benefit in return. I'll tell you what else she does. A lot of my cousins have gotten married. And one thing that my mom often offers to them is building a cake. Again, they typically do not ask her. My mom offers that to her. So when you think about mothers, you think about compassion. They're all about taking care of the people that they love. Second thing I want to talk about is discipline. Now you can think of discipline as in physical, or you can think about it as verbal. Let's talk about this. I'm going to be reading out of Proverbs 13. Let me find it real quick here. Proverbs 13, 24. He who withholds his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. Now in this form, what I believe that they're talking about in Proverbs is the act of physical punishment. So like spanking little slap on the face, little slap on the wrist, whatever. Now, in my personal experience growing up with my mother, she hardly ever laid a hand on me. I'll be real with you. She didn't really even need to. Because a lot of the things that I may have said or did could be resolved with a conversation. And that's one thing that I absolutely love about my mom. She would be real with you all the time. Almost too real to the point where you can't even handle it. And that's one thing that I really appreciate about my mom. She'll listen to your side of the story. And she'll take you a full, full, full here. And then what my mom will do is she'll collect what you said. And then she'll tell you what she thinks. And then together... A natural conversation would flow. My mom is all about helping us understand where we went wrong. And she's all about helping us find ways to correct our behavior. Again, my mom never laid a hand. Now, if she ever did spank me when I was a kid, I probably deserved it. Either lied to her about something or I said something very nasty. But usually everything that my mom and I went through together as far as discipline is concerned, it's all about talking. Because my mom doesn't believe in laying a hand on a person to correct a problem. She believes that a lot of problems can be solved by our words. Heart-to-heart -heart conversations. And that's how we learn. That's how I learn from my mistakes. It's by having those Difficult conversations with my mom and my father. But I feel like if you want a healthy relationship with your mother and father, you had to talk about things that are difficult to talk about. And that's one thing that I appreciate about my mom. Third thing that we're going to talk about is support. And we're going to go in First John 19. Remember, this is the gospel. The fourth installment. Okay. Okay, we are in 1 John chapter 19, verse 25. It says, Therefore the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. Now, I think of this as being supportive. You usually go to your mom when you have something to talk about because you know that mothers are more accepting. 
Dads tend to not be as accepting. Dads tend to talk you out of things and whatnot. I'll tell you about... About my mom. Now, I'm a crazy son of a gun. And by that, I mean that I have all these crazy ideas of what I wanted to do in life. And I would run them by my mom. Because I know my mom's not one to steer away her child from their dreams. Not saying my dad would, but just stay stay with me here. But I would normally, like, I would normally go to my mom and I'd talk to her, like, Hey, mom, thinking about going back to school for this. What do you think? And I can tell you a few things that I told, talked to her about. Nursing. Teaching. And being a pastor. Then nursing, she felt like that might have been too difficult for me. So instead of telling me, oh, no, you shouldn't do that, she kind of gave me an alternative. Like, why not think about getting a CNA or becoming a respiratory therapist? Because those require less schooling and it wouldn't be as difficult. That's one thing mom thought about. It. And then I remember telling her about teaching. Because I love youth. I love teaching. I love being able to help people learn things. Because I feel that the day that you stop learning, you become useless. And I remember telling my mom about that. She thinks, hey, you'd be a great teacher. Because you love learning. You love education. There, That's where the support comes in. See, she listens to you. She internalizes everything. And then she tells you what she thinks. I typically go to my mom for support. Because I know that no matter what, she will have my back. And that's what I appreciate about her. And then I kind of go to her about being a pastor. Now this is a legit vision that I had 13 years ago. I should have pursued it out of high school, but I didn't feel at that time I lived enough life to be able to relate to people. Let's just say within the past 13 years, I've lived enough life to understand what people go through, what adults go through, what teenagers go through, what parents go through. I've seen a lot. I've dealt with a lot, maybe not personally, but I've seen it affect the lives of those who have gone through it. I've seen how it's affected people that are not directly involved, but indirectly involved. Regardless, my mom, she represents each one of those points to the T. She's very compassionate. Very loving, very supportive. She'll do anything for you. But as soon as you start showing her any side of, like, no effort or you don't, you don't want to improve yourself, you don't want to better yourself, she's going to stop. It's kind of like you, you hear that old saying, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. See, I don't think relationships should be like that. I feel like everybody should be like my mom. They should be willing to serve other people despite what they do to them, despite how they feel about them. They should show love. In fact... And John, I believe it was 13 or 14, he talks about one of his new commandments. Can't remember where that was, but he talks about one of his commandments being that you should love the Lord God with all your heart. As much as your neighbor. And 
What he also talks about is that you should treat one another with respect. And my mom epitomizes that. That's what I love and admire about her. Willing to put aside her personal feelings about people. And she's willing to serve them with love anyway. Mom, you are a courageous person. You are an amazing person. I know without a shadow of a doubt, you will always have my back. You will always be my support. You will be my rock. You will be my hero. Because I often look up to you when I need strength. I look up to you when I need love. I look up to you when I need hope. Thank you. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for supporting every crazy idea that I've ever had. Thank you for showing up to all my concerts. Thank you for being by my side uh, when I was at the hospital. Thank you for working your butt off to provide for me. Thank you for helping pay my insurance. Thank you for making food for me. Thank you for giving me a place to stay. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your hugs. Thank you for everything from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. And I never want to lose that. Hope that you have a great day and know that I love you. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, my grandma Gigi, my sisters Danielle and Brandy, my aunts. I had to name them all, uh, Terry, Dawn, Karen, Bev, Tina, Pat, I don't like having to think, but to everybody, whether your family, your friends, whatever, I wish you a happy Mother's Day. Thank you, ladies, for all the hard work that you do. And a lot of you are not traditional housewives, which means that you're out in the force, you're working your butt off. Thank you. Some of you are even doing it by yourselves. You're raising your children by yourselves. I say thank you. Some of you are kind of going through a rough patch right now. You may have lost your kids temporarily because of some bad choices. But you're doing everything that you can to get them back. I hope and pray that that does happen for you. Because nothing is greater than having a relationship with someone you love. And I hope and pray that good things happen for you. Because you deserve it. Don't let one mistake define who you are. And don't let society define who you are. Worry more about your character, what you're doing right now to improve yourself versus your reputation. Because it's never too late to change. Remember that. It's never too late to be the person God created you to be. I love you. You are loved. Go out, be blessed, and have a wonderful day, ladies. Mwah.